It's a quiet day in town, nothing major happening, until a criminal comes out of nowhere looking to cause trouble. He decides to pay a visit to a nearby store as a so-called customer. Inside the store, we see a store clerk at his desk. The store clerk hears the door open and a customer comes in. The customer reveals to be a criminal named Rick Slickster. He walks closer to the clerk. They have a little conversation afterwards, with Rick being a little smart and threatening. Hello, can I help you? You don't know what I really want. I mean, if you're lost, I'll be glad to help you with what you're looking for. Rick then draws his gun at the clerk's face, ordering him to give him the money. Pack the money. What is this? This is a bloody robbery. Now pack up the money or get shot. No way! You get out of here now! Rick comes closer to the clerk with his gun, preparing it to shoot, causing him to quickly retract and give him what he wants. Okay, don't kill me. Please don't. The clerk quickly opens the register, packs up the money into a bag and hands the bag over to Rick. Here, you got what you want. Now leave. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Rick leaves the store, completely satisfied with his robbery. As Rick steps out, the store clerk yells after him. I'm not your buddy, and I'm calling the police right now. Back outside, two kids see Rick leaving the store and getting into his car through a camera. The kids behind the camera are revealed to be Bert and Melina, two of Seth's partners in crime fighting. Well, what do we have here? Bert and Melina saw everything happening, and as soon as they realize the criminals leaving the scene with the store's money, they contact Inspector Seth Norton. Meanwhile, Seth is somewhere in the city, eating a sandwich while he leans on his police car. His cell phone vibrates and his ringtone plays XLF. Seth then takes out his cell phone and answers the call. Hello? Seth Norton speaking. Hi, Mr. Norton. Hi, Melina. Seth, we spotted a bank robber. He looks pretty strange. All right. He's getting away. Hurry. Thanks, you guys. You've interrupted my breakfast. Again. As soon as Seth disconnects the call, Bert and Melina get into Bert's car, and they both drive off to catch up to the criminal and Seth. Seth is in his police car, driving and searching for the crime scene on his computer in hopes of finding Rick. Welcome. Please enter your PIN number. Thank you. Welcome back, Mr. Norton. Searching for crime scenes. One crime scene in progress. Location, a local store. Number of suspects, one. Number of victims, one. Seth then sees Rick driving by at high speed. He seems to recognize the person in some way, shape, or form. Mr. Rick Slickster. Why is he not in jail yet? I recognize that car. Seth quickly starts to pursue Rick and turns on the siren on his police car in the process. Mr. Rick Slickster, you have 10 seconds to stop or I will use force. Hearing the police siren, Rick quickly checks his rearview mirror to see Seth chasing after him, but he came prepared. He opens a secret panel on his dashboard and presses a button to make his car release oil from behind. Caught by surprise, the inspector tries to keep control over his car. Shit! Behind Seth and Rick, Bert and Melina are tailing them and try not to lose them. Along the way, they come across a man with his dog on the street, while they try to avoid him. No, no, no! Not my dog! Don't hit my dog! What are you doing? Get off the street! The dog tries to run away as the girl comes up to tell them to move out of the way. Luckily, Bert and Melina successfully avoid the dog. Maybe you should get a better leash, dude. Meanwhile, back at the police chase with Seth and Rick. I'll use EMP to stop him. EMP activated. Seth activates the EMP cannon in his car while the computer takes aim at Rick's vehicle. Once the computer beeps to indicate the target has been locked, Seth presses the fire button. The EMP pulse fires from the front of Seth's police car and hits Rick's, sending it flying and coming to a stop at a bus stop. Rick climbs out of his car and takes cover behind it, readying his gun while Seth stops his car and exits as well, both aiming their guns at each other. You know, Mr. Rick Slickster, you don't look much like James Bond, but you sure as hell try too hard to be him, don't you think? I I'd suggest you pick a different character to be. Y y you're Seth Norton. Yeah, I'm me. Now let's take you to jail. You're a dead man. I know you are, but what am I, asswipe? Seth walks closer to Rick with his gun pointing at the criminal. 
You shouldn't have messed with me, Seth Norton. I'm dangerous. You're not. You're fake. You're like what you see on TV all the time. What everybody sees on TV all the time. I'm the real deal. I'm my own person. You're nothing. You're the real deal for police officers to take you to prison instead of jail. For almost killing a cop. That's worse than robbing a store and almost killing a shopkeeper. But you know what? You are in fact your own person, Mr. Slickster. You're your own asshole. Trying to be slick. And you're not slick. You're a piece of shit. Seth shoots Rick in the leg, causing him to drop his gun. Mm, damn it! You shot me in the leg, you bitch! Call your mother or your sister that? Just be lucky that I won't kill you. Because I can. And it will be the end. Mm, fuck you, Seth Norton. Go to hell. Out of nowhere, Bert and Melina show up behind Rick. No! Fuck you! Melina uses her stun gun to tase Rick and he falls to the ground. And while you're on the ground, think about how shocking it is for someone to play 007 and cause chaos in this city. Seth puts his gun away and then walks up to Bert and Melina. Bert, Melina, how do I say this without being rude? Uh, thank you for saving my life, but you guys have to go home. I'll take care of this myself. It's no big deal. I always wish that you were our dad. Why? My dad doesn't do shit in our family to save our lives too much. At least my mom is better than your dad, Bert. You two go home now. Bye, Mr. Norton. Bert and Melina walk away from Seth and Rick. Seth gets Rick off the ground and puts him in handcuffs. Cheer up, Rick. When you get to prison, how about we give you something that's shaken but not stirred to drink? Like what? Something worse than dirty water in your own piss. Seth collects the money, takes Rick to his police car, and they both get in and drive off. On his way to take Rick to jail, Seth stops by the store that Rick had robbed to give the clerk his money back. He gets out of his car and walks into the store. Mr. Seth Norton, thank God you're here! Hello, sir. I believe all this money's yours. Consider buying a safe. Oh, and hang tight. Help is on the way. Aw, oh, thank you so much! Seth leaves the store quietly. I know this is probably a bad time, but can I get you a discount on anything you'd like? Later at Seth's house, Seth is sitting in his chair listening to his radio which is sitting on a table next to him. Axel Laugh by Harold Faltermeyer plays on the radio. Oh great, I love that song and that movie. The song continues to play from Seth's house and even though its volume is low it can still be heard from outside. Meanwhile, Bert and Melina are walking by Seth's house, but they stop to hear what Seth is listening to. They express different opinions about it. Always playing that song on his radio. That song reminds me of Crazy Frog. I hate that stupid frog. Anything original without Crazy Frog being all over it is better. I will say that. Let's go visit Hermione. Out of nowhere, Mrs. Morningham, Melina's mother and Bert's stepmother, comes to see the kids. Hey, kids. Hi, Mom. Hi, Stepmom. Where are you going? To the hospital. Your father, Stepfather, has gotten into an accident out on the streets. Oh, well, that sucks. I hope he's okay. Well, I don't. The bloody idiot wouldn't even make me dinner last week. How come he can cook for you both and not for me most of the time? I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> Anyways, I'm off to the hospital. Where are you two going? We're going to see Hermione. Yeah. Oh, I don't give a shit. Have fun. And tell Mr. Norton to turn off that music. Sounds like Crazy Frog to me. But it's not Crazy Frog. I'll do it. You two carry on. Bert and Melina walk away from Mrs. Morningham as she starts to walk towards Seth's house. She knocks on the door. Inside, Seth reacts to the knocking by turning his radio completely down, then gets up and walks to his front door, opening it up to see who it is. Pick a new bloody song! Crazy Frog sucks! It's not Crazy Frog, ma'am. I don't fucking care! Just pick a new one! I'm so sick of hearing it! My kids listened to that shit when they were younger, non-stop, and now I'm tired of it! <sighs> bloody hell! 
Mrs. Morningham leaves, and Seth shuts his door, then goes to turn off his radio completely. Damn. It's like some of today's people have never seen classic movies or listened to classic soundtracks. <sighs> Shortly after the brief argument with Mrs. Morningham, Seth leaves his house, gets in his police car, and drives away. Later, Bert and Melina arrive at the Kane family's house. They get to the front door and Bert knocks. Answering the door, Hermione Kane sees Bert and Melina, and she's very happy to see them. Oh, hi, Bert and Melina. Hello, Hermione. How are you? Oh, I'm pretty good. What brings you two over here? We want to come hang out with you. Okay, but I'm not sure though. My mother was such a train wreck lately, and not in a good way. Is she okay? Yeah, I guess. Um, I'll let her know that both of you are here just to hang out. But my dad's cool though. He doesn't mind you two being over here. So, uh, can we come in? Yeah, come in. Hermione lets Bert and Melina inside her house, assuming that everything is okay now. Meanwhile, Seth goes to the coffee chain to have a coffee. Arriving there, he gets out of his police car and sees Julie, the coffee shop girl behind the counter, and Rodney in his regular seat. He walks over there and says hello to them. Hello, Julie. Hey, Hot Rod. Hello, Seth. What's up, Seth? Nothing much. Can I get some coffee, please? Sure. Seth sits down at the counter while Julie pours Seth his cup of coffee. He then looks over at Ronnie to see if he's doing okay, as Seth is a little concerned about him. Hot Rod, you're always over here, aren't you? Why, you want to arrest me? No, if you're not, you know, starting shit or robbing banks or stores or coffee shops, homes or committing terrorism and all that, then I don't see the point of arresting you. I know you. You're pretty terrified whenever the shocker almost killed you, weren't you? That's in the past, man. You killed him, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I don't know. He kind of disappeared all of a sudden. The devil might have picked him up and took him to hell. <laughs> I know what you mean. Uh, you want some coffee? Nah, I'm good, thanks. Julie sets the coffee down near Seth, and Seth immediately takes a sip. So, how's the police business? There ain't nothing happening right now, Julie. The city's as quiet as a mouse. <laughs> I know, right? But it's not always going to be quiet. Sometime later, something bad will happen. No kidding. Stuff happens almost every day. We just don't know what it is, though. But I hope it's not completely dangerous and evil. Meanwhile, inside the Kane's house, Hermione lets in Bert and Melina, and lets her mother know that they're here to hang out with her. Hermione's mother, Marge Kane, comes downstairs to see Bert and Melina. Marge looks decent for a woman and mother of one, but the same can't be said about her short-tempered attitude, and what was going down with her and her husband soon. Mother, Bert and Melina are here. They're going to hang out with me. Is that okay? Well, of course. How are you today, Bert and Melina? We're fine, Mrs. Kane. We have no tricks up our sleeves to harm you or your family. Not even Hermione. Okay. Just don't try anything. If we did, you would have kicked us out. I would. I want to go outside. Let's go outside. Hermione, Bert, and Melina head to the back door. Hey, smartass. Being called out by his name, Bert looks at Marge. Watch your mouth. Don't hurt me, I'm sorry. Oh, come on, Bert. Melina pulls Bert along by his arm as she follows Hermione outside. Marge proceeds to be arrogant and carries on with her rants. Tony, Marge's husband and Hermione's dad, would step in afterwards to try to shut her up. If we did, you would have kicked us out. Yeah, I wouldn't kick you out. I'd hurt you and then kick you out. Oh, come on, Marge. You don't gotta be such a bitch. What's wrong with you? You're what's wrong with me, Tony. Now shut up. What is wrong with you? What got up your ass? You gotta chill out and take some medicine. How about you choke yourself, Tony? You goddamn stupid bastard, I'm about tired of you. Can you say something without swearing, woman? Okay, how about you drop dead, you stupid moron? How's that, huh, piece of shit? You know what, darling? I'm trying to be nice to you. This is my house. 
my house woman. I bought it, and I can kick you out of it if you continue to act this way. There's gotta be something wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with me, okay? I'm calming down now. <sighs> I need a drink. <laughs> yeah, damn right you need a drink. I'll go get some coffee. I'll be right back. After Tony successfully tells Marjov, she leaves the house to get some coffee. Duh, what ails that woman? What in God's green earth ails her? A-I-L, ail, meaning that that bitch is nothing but a troubled nutcase. Tony calms down after his rant on Marge, then goes out to the backyard to see Hermione, Bert, and Melina. Hey, kids. Hi, Dad. What's wrong with Mom? I heard you two arguing. Uh, something's wrong with her, and I don't know what it is. She wasn't like that when I met her, and I'm doing my best to take care of both of you. I think she's mad because we didn't win the lottery. You know what? Could be. She was fired from a job for Frank calling her own job and spewing out nasty shit on the phone. Uh, her job recorded it, and then they recognized her voice, and then the next day after that, they fired her. Uh, she then tried to play the lottery, but it didn't win. Now she's a nutcase. I know you work so hard to take care of us. Uh, I know that for sure. She's just so irate and ignorant and stupid. Uh, honey, do you think we should just call mental services? I don't know the answer to that, Dad. It's kind of hard. She might get violent if we try getting her to seek help. Oh, come on, Hermione. Don't say that. She needs help and she needs help ASAP. It's worth a shot. Now I'm gonna go back inside. You have fun with Bert and Melina. Alright, Dad. I love you. I love you too, sweetie. Tony turns around to walk back inside the house, but turns back around to say hi to Bert and Melina. Hey, Bert. Melina. How you doing? We're fine. It's a lovely day. Is it not? <sighs> yeah. Tony heads back inside the house. Bert and Melina then try to talk to Hermione. Hermione, I don't know how long you're going to be able to put up with this nonsense. It's hard. My dad works almost every day to put food on our table, and so did Mom at one point. Now, it's just... a maze. You gotta find a way out. Maybe I need to find a way out. This drama's really killing me. Do you want to come with us? We don't have many issues at our house. I mean, stupid shit happens, but we're getting along. Yeah, why don't you come with us? No, I can't leave. I don't feel like leaving. But I hope something bad doesn't happen. Me neither. Back at the coffee chain, Marge shows up to get a coffee. She sits down next to Seth and tries to have a conversation with him. Hello? How are you doing? I'm okay, thank you. Aren't you Seth Norton? You sure do look like him. Yeah, of course, everyone knows me. I'm like the city's last hope, their golden boy, and a superhero. If I was a superhero, my name would probably be Mr. Justice. In other words, I'm the most famous cop of the city. Even if I have to get deadly at times. You know what I mean? Yeah. Excuse me, miss. Could I get a cup of coffee, please? Yes. Thank you. What is your name, miss? Marge. Marge Kane. Marge Kane? Oh yeah, you're the mother of Hermione. I didn't recognize you for a minute. I only know your husband and daughter. Bert and Melina are good friends with your daughter. I barely know you. Right. What's wrong? Is, is something bothering you? Look, Mr. Norton, I'm not ready to talk to you about what's going on. It's personal. Well, ma'am, I do have a right to ask what's going on. I am a cop. I'm too pissed off right now, sir. I really don't want to go off on you. Please? Marge, are you okay? I've never seen you like this before in my life. Something has to be up with you, and if you calm down, I can... You can tell me what happened. Then we can take care of it. Hey, when's my coffee gonna be ready? Marge, please talk to me. What is the problem? After trying to keep herself calm when Seth tries to help her, Marge loses her cool and goes off on him. My husband. 
Okay? My husband is my problem. Who? Tony? No shit! If you want to come by and arrest him sometime, be my freaking guest. Ma'am, are you okay? No, I'm not. Now can I get my coffee and go, please? It's right here, ma'am. Thanks. Marge grabs her coffee from Julie and leaves, but not before saying goodbye to Seth. Goodbye, Mr. Norton. Get well soon, Marge. Yeah, right. Marge walks away from the coffee chain. Seth then tries to figure out what's going on with Marge. Do you know what was going on with her? No, I haven't seen her in a long while. I know her husband and daughter the most. Tony Kane and Hermione Kane. His wife used to work at a law firm. I, I don't know the rest. I hope she's okay. Arriving back at home and opening the door, Marge walks into the house and closes the door. She's holding her cup of coffee and sees Tony sitting in his chair. She walks closer to him and the two would begin talking to each other again. Another argument would slowly build up in the process. <sighs> hey Tony, can you come here for a minute? I want to talk to you. <sighs> well, I'm right here. Why don't you come over here and talk to me? All right. So, about the argument we had earlier, I didn't mean some of the stuff that I was saying, but I was obviously being a little mean, and I'm just having a bad day. <sighs> yeah, Marge. It's almost every day. You would always have an episode. Well, I'm trying to control myself. It was all a mistake. <sighs> yeah, it was. You're the mistake. You're crazy as hell, and I think it's time that you went outside and did something productive with your life, than just playing the mega bitch all the time. Now why would you say that to me, Tony? I'm only trying to be nice. Oh, please. If you were trying to be nice, your tea wouldn't have been spilt. What have I done to you? March, March, you are crazy, and I think you need to get out of my face. I'm not dealing with you right now. Well, Tony, I really don't want to spill some tea again, but after calling me a mega bitch, you know what? Maybe I am. Marge angrily opens up the coffee cup and spills it all over Tony. Ugh. As Marge turns away from Tony, her eyes fall onto a stick near her. In a surge of emotion, she grabs it and lashes out at her husband. Fuck you, Tony! Drop dead! <laughs> <laughs> Even though the first blow knocks him out cold, she keeps beating him, and Tony is murdered, as he dies from the injuries caused by March's aggressive and deadly hits with the stick. Once her rage subsides, she stops beating him and takes his dead body somewhere where no one can find it. She then rushes outside to the backyard to get Hermione. Mom, what's going on? Come on, Hermione, we're going to the police station. Marge grabs Hermione and escorts her to a car. Bert and Melina follow Marge and Hermione to figure out what's going on. What's going on? It's none of your business, you guys, and you really shouldn't stay here. Now both of you, leave. Go home. Marge gets into her car. What is going on? Your dad committed suicide. He killed himself? Yes, now get in. Hermione gets into her mother's car. Her mother then drives off from their house, leaving Bert and Melina behind. The two would watch the car drive away from them, while figuring out what went down. What the hell is even happening, Bert? I don't know, Melina, but I don't like it already. 